Hi guys, so today we're going to talk about my top 12 most used watercolours. So we've done kind of a, uh, you know, swatching of the like large palette and a kind of quite a few years worth of a collection there. I have kind of talked you through this palette here, which is like my top 12 picks if you were starting a palette. Um, but I thought I was sort of going through and so you can kind of see all the colors are quite nicely represented there. But um, I was going through like my top, I was kind of going to pick, you know, just a few of my top most used um, watercolors. And then I realized my top 12 actually makes a palette similar to that one, but with a few differences. So I thought it might be interesting um, if you're looking to start out and you're not sure, um, you know, I thought this would be quite a good video. I was also working on some cherry blossoms from a um, Instagrammed art prompt for the stay at home. So that was quite nice. But um, let's get back to here. So from this palette and why I kind of put this palette together was because I was trying to find... The least you know if you were starting and you wanted to mix palette um, sorry colors you can mix very vibrant colors you can mix a very moody palette from that um, so I really like that palette but here I, I just started swatching my most used colors and ones that I've had to refill or ones where my pan is nearly empty and so I have just done like a little preliminary kind of um, swatching there and a few mixes but when I'm swatching this out for you here it you know it really looks like a, a 12 color palette and so I'm actually quite excited about this So we're working in the Jane Davenport sketchbook and I really like the paper in this sketchbook. It's quite like large. So I really like the big sketchbooks that give you a lot of room to kind of work and um, splash paint around and kind of try and figure things out. And then what I'm going to do is just show you through some of my colors here. So one of the colors that I really love and use a lot is indigo and the second most used blue is cobalt turquoise by Schmincke so the indigo is by Daniel Smith the cobalt turquoise is by Schmincke but I'm going to show you a couple of either like my second most used or some other options that you have for the colors like here is a Daniel Smith cobalt teal which you could use instead of the cobalt turquoise and also the Daniel Smith sleeping beauty which I really love in this soft concentration and then you've also got um, the manganese blue hue that you could pick from as well. So I I just I like kind of giving you options and I feel like the colors you can see them really well in this video. So what I'm going to do is put my most used and my kind of second most used down there and then anything that doesn't end up there you'll know that I still use it quite a lot as well. Um, and like the smelt I was showing you there I'm kind of thinking of putting that in maybe instead of cobalt blue and seeing how that's, that goes. So um, now we're on to the purples and my most used is Sugalite but I really like the ultramarine violet. Is it ultramarine violet? And I actually like the Winsor & Newton Cobalt Violet, but I only have the Brilliant Purple on the swatch card. So I'm just kind of showing that to you, which I actually started out using and liking that more. And then I've kind of switched to the Cobalt Violet. So they're in the same kind of um, hue there, I guess. So, And then we have the Opera Rose on the end as well, so you can see how that differs from the purple. Um, so we're on to greens here and I really love the Daniel Smith Fuchsite, that is my favourite green. And we have the uh, green gold is my second most used green. So then I really love the Daniel Smith lemon, oh no, I love the Schmincke lemon yellow. 
So the shrink is a little bit cooler. I really, really like to be able to have that pop of the really um, crisp yellow. And then I, I pretty much always tone it down with the French ochre. So I really like the Daniel Smith French ochre. It's very transparent and it's a really light, pretty color. But I use that as my warm yellow. And so I often, you know, tone down the yellow with that, like in the middle of flowers or something. And I'm just kind of showing you a couple of um, different ochres. These are all Daniel Smith here. I really like the Italian deep ochre as well. So um, just so you can see, there might be one there that suits you better. And then here we have the Sedona. And this is my um, kind of replacement of the Burnt Sienna. I, I feel like it's got a little bit of like pink undertones. I really like it. So I use that a lot. Okay, and I'm sorry, I feel like we're speeding through this, but these are the dark browns. I love the Van Dyke brown. I use that the most, but I also like the hematite. As you can see, it's got like the um, brown sort of undertones. And so I use that a lot instead of a black or for like buildings with French ochre or something like that. And then we also have the shell pink there as my other pink. So I kind of use that as a replacement. I use like the shell pink as a replacement for orange and the opera rose as a replacement for red. And so here are some earth pigments. These are all from Rivervale Watercolors on Etsy. I absolutely love these colors. So the there's three main ones that I use from here. One is this porphyry violet ochre. I've been using that a lot lately. I think instead of this kind of replaces a quin purple or um, a Bordeaux or, or a color like that. And then I love the through light as well. It's very expensive. So I use Potter's Pink, Windsor & Newton Potter's Pink instead of that mostly. Um, but I don't have a swatch card of that. And then we have the Pink Pipe Stone, which is gorgeous as well. And I'm just showing you the lemon yellow there um, with the French ochre. So most other ochres I find have like a quite opaque and heavy. And I really love this French ochre um, Daniel Smith version. Okay, so this is kind of an assortment of my 12 most used and my sort of next most used colors as well. So some of these we're going to filter out and narrow it down and then we will get into the top 12. So I'm going to use them from, this is kind of my travel palette and I haven't swatched this out yet but you can see all the colours there and if you have any questions just ask me below and I'm happy to um, kind of tell you where I got something but I think it's pretty much all covered in the um, swatching the big palette video as well because they're pretty much all colours from that palette. And so what we're going to do is swatch them out so you can kind of see them in action and then make some mixes from them so you can kind of see how versatile it is. You can see here like the colors that I've already used and then like the fuchsia it's already been filled up, the super light's already been filled up, um, a lot, the shell pink is always getting filled up and um, yeah a lot of the other colors like are nearing the bottom of the pan. So I just realized that the um, the Schmincke Lemon Yellow is in this palette, so the other one's Daniel Smith. So I wanted to just uh, swatch out this one for you because it's just ever so slightly cooler, but I just really like this version.
so like I said on on um, sort of a regular palette like if you bought a, a ready-made palette you would probably have a warm and a cool version of yellow and so that is my version and um, basically what ends up happening is the bottom row of this palette ends up being neutrals and the top palette ends up being brights and so you can mix a lot of things and then you can also tone a lot of things down and create more moody pieces from you know all from this one palette you can get so many variations of different color palettes from it the funny thing is in thinking about this palette and kind of putting it together i can't really even tell you exactly what i paint with each color but i just know that i use them all the time So the Opera Rose, this one, it could be Schmincke or Daniel Smith. I think I got a five mil tube of each of them at, at some stage. So I'm not really sure. I don't have a preference. They're pretty similar. This one is um, actually a recent uh, kind of purchase in the next, in the last sort of few months. And I had seen this on Liz Steele's palette for quite a while. I'd seen it in the um, Daniel Smith dot cards and I highly recommend getting the Daniel Smith dot cards off Amazon and you can swatch out all the colors and kind of see which ones actually suit you best. So, you know, these are the ones that I um, use, but you know, you may have totally different ones here. So like I use the Fuchite a lot and I guess I use the green gold in place of um, like a sap green or something. So, you know, but you might always use like sap green and queen gold or something else. So that's totally fine. But I'm just kind of showing you here uh, my take on it. So I wanted you to see the angle of this because this is pearl white. And you can see here the pearlescent nature of it. I absolutely love this color. Um... And this will make any other color pearlescent. So you can just mix it with anything else that you're using. It doesn't have to be, you know, this brand or anything. This is a Daniel Smith Pearl White, but you can just mix it with anything and it will become a shimmer color. So it's really amazing for that. Um, and also the Fuchsite and a lot of the Daniel Smith colors, they have a Primatech range, which is actually from mineral pigments or semi-precious gemstones so um, that is really amazing to me that that can become paint that we can use and um, it's so beautiful like the fuchsite has a sparkle in it and whenever you mix it with anything it gets that sparkle as well so you know if you don't like the sparkle that might not be for you um, you might want like a sennelier emerald green instead but yeah i really really love it so this is the Daniel Smith Indigo and I do like this one the most and um, it's just a really nice dark clear colour and it um, I use it kind of more even than Cobalt Turquoise or Cobalt Blue so instead of like an Ultramarine or something like that I, I tend to use this one the most. Uh, this one here is Daniel Smith's Sugalite and I really love this one as well. So it's a nice moody purple but with the um, pink which I'll show you in a minute like with the Opera Rose you can mix a really bright vibrant purple or you can also mix one from the Opera Rose and the Cobalt Turquoise as well.
So here is our final top 12 most used palette. I really do love all these colors and I do use them all the time. So when I'm looking at them, I know that I, you know, use them all the time. So I'm, I'm really happy with um, how this turned out. And I'm just going to show you this um, in comparison to the other palette that I kind of recommend as well. So there's only a couple of colors that are different there. It's a pretty similar palette. And to be honest, um, I love them both together. Like it's got the green gold in the other one. And that is one of my, you know, as we saw before, that's one of my second most used kind of colors. So, and the Jean Brilliant number two also is pretty well used. Um, and I, I just like the mine red there. I don't use it very often, but I do like having it there. Anyway, so you can see here, I've started mixing. I mixed the fuchsia with the lemon yellow and you get a really nice lime green. If you want to, you can tone that down a bit with um, the French ochre or one of the other browns to create a little bit more of a um, sort of an olive green as well. Uh, here I think I just mixed the Sugalite and the Shell Pink maybe or the Potter's Pink. I'm, I'm not sure but just to get a more muted still kind of a purpley tone. And then here I've mixed the um, purple with the Opera Rose. I think I mixed the Turquoise and the Opera Rose so you can see there how nice and vibrant that can become. And then this is one of my favourite mixes actually so... I love the fuchsia, I love the cobalt turquoise, but when you mix them together, you get this really, really nice color. And it also becomes a shimmer because of the fuchsia. So next, I can actually see what I'm, um, what I am mixing up here. Uh, okay, so I'm mixing up the indigo and the Van Dyke to make a, a gray. So you can make like some neutrals and some grays in various ways with this palette but that's one way to get a really dark nice gray pretty quickly and so at this point I think I just try a couple of other mixing some other neutrals like a French ochre and indigo and some things like that you can see there this is again it's becoming more of like an olive um, green so if you just added a little bit of a fuchsia or something like that you would or maybe like the cobalt turquoise or the lemon yellow you'd get some um, nice variations on that and then here I mix the Sedona and the fuchsia so this next one is a little bit trickier with this palette I'm trying to make a dark green and so you can create that with either indigo and um, French ochre or indigo and lemon yellow but I find that if you add a touch of fuchsia you can get sort of um, a bit more of a natural green there and so now we're going to use the lemon yellow and the opera rose and create like a really vibrant orange and again you can tone that down with the French ochre or the Sedona. So here I'm just uh, mixing shell pink and the Sedona and I'm just trying to create a couple of different skin tones as well. So you can see like along the whole bottom you can create some really nice different skin tones and um, you can see like the bottom like is the neutrals and then the top is the brights and you can mix most colors from these colors and I guess that's why I'm using them all the time because they're so versatile. So this one's one of my favorite ways to create shadows especially for uh, florals and that is fuchsia and shell pink. So it creates a really nice soft shell, um, soft grey, which you kind of often find in, you know, rose petals or things like that. Okay, so we're nearly done, guys. So this is a mix of Potter's Pink and 
pearl white and I absolutely love this I think I want to have a um, half pan of this kind of pre-mixed and ready on my palette I really really love it I, I, I didn't quite mix enough here so you didn't sort of see it in a saturated form but it's such a pretty color and so I think the last thing we're going to mix is Opera Rose and Sedona. This is one of my favorite mixes. Um, it makes just this really nice kind of warm pinky brown. And yeah, I find, I find this really useful. I really love it. So that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I have been chasing daylight to try and get this finished and the voiceover and everything done. But I may not get it uploaded until Monday morning now. So really sorry about that um i did sort of try to get it done but everything just seems to be taking so long so anyway i will just leave you with a bit of a snippet of lunch and um really enjoying like um some italian herbs and this this new um olive oil it's so delicious it's from costco and then we have the little baby dove we just found out today that she has two babies so yeah we're excited about that so anyway we will see you in the next video bye